Okay, so today we're going to explore the Vanderberg and Johnson K2 SFF method and understand how it works. Uh, this method comes from this paper, a technique for extracting highly precise photometry for the two-wheeled Kepler mission. Uh, that paper is available online. So uh, one thing you can do is uh, see the figures, and the goal of this notebook is to replicate some of those figures. So uh, we'll come back to these later. So for now, let's uh, start by just doing some standard imports. Uh, we're going to be using pandas, astropy fits, matplotlib, and numpy. And uh, one of the main focuses of this uh, notebook is to use the exact same source that the Vanderberg paper did, uh, which is this source. It actually comes from the uh, two-wheel conceptual engineering test, which predates campaign zero. Uh, it's sometimes called like the engineering campaign, uh, sort of a vestigial campaign. It was only about nine days long. Um, and it uh, lacks some of the standard stuff that we're used to in K2 data. But nonetheless, it's the target that was used in the paper, so we're going to aim to replicate it exactly. The first thing we want to do is understand which mask was used. So the Vanderberg uh, and Johnson method uses uh, different uh, masks, like any technique really, for, for K2 data analysis. So here's the mask that was used in the publication which is available uh, in this image online. Um, but the available uh, data from MAST, uh, the, the SFF method available for MAST, uses a slightly different mask, so it's slightly smaller. So we'll just use a slightly bigger mask than what was used in MAST, and that will uh, provide basically uh, a little bit bigger and a little more similar to what was in the paper, and that should be pretty close. Uh, and we'll save that for, for later use. Okay, so uh, now we can go ahead and actually just use the diagnostic data. This is available online, so you can uncomment this if you want to retrieve that. Uh, and we'll use pandas just to read it in as a data frame, and we can inspect what it looks like. So it just has time and flux, and then uh, really all the stuff that the method, uh, this F SFF method, gives you, uh, which we're going to replicate here. So first thing we do is uh, get the columns and rows just from the uh, x and y centroid positions. We'll just subtract off the means, uh, no problem there. And then um, the first thing that the paper does is actually compute these, uh, the rotation of of these um, XY centroids into like a, a basis that's uh, more of like a straight line, so the major and minor axes, and we can look at a figure that demonstrates that. So most of the motion of the of the XY centroids one is smaller than about a pixel um, on average. Uh, there's maybe a little more than that, but within typically within about a pixel of motion, uh, actually much more than a pixel because these are arc seconds. Um, so uh, so there's about four uh, arc seconds in a pixel for Kepler. So this is all within one pixel, So, so uh, but, but typically within one arc second or so of motion. Um, and it's all along one line. So uh, we can see that these are the major and min major axis here, and then the minor axis has a little bit of, of motion in this particular target. And this looks really similar to uh, figure two of Vanderberg and Johnson. In fact, it should look really identical uh, these happen to be transposed into um, other directions, and that's the, the same exact effect. Okay, so that's figure two. Uh, the, the next thing we do is just rotate the entire figure so that we can see a little bit better. Okay, here's the uh, X prime position, which is in this new uh, major axis, and the Y position. And again, you see a little bit of um, motion perpendicular to the major axis. So you can cal calculate the uh, arc length, uh, which is defined with this equation uh, from the paper. And then you can fit a polynomial to this uh, distribution of points. And therefore, for any x prime position, you can say, uh, for starting from the farthest away point, uh, how far you've moved. Um, or, or where along this arc length you are. Uh, and that's a way of just uh, uh, providing like a, a curved uh, position or p p the position along a curved line. Um, uh, and that's pretty useful. 
So we calculate that here. We do a fifth order polynomial, which is the same thing as we see in the paper, and it looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Maybe you could uh, get a little bit better if you if you really tried to um, to use this bias variance trade off a little bit uh, differently, but uh, but effectively it's it's pretty good, and we can define a function now that computes the arc length um, exactly, and we can double check and make sure we get the same answer as the paper, and, and we do, so we're, we're working on the same thing, so that's good. Okay, the next step that uh, the uh, SFF method does is to actually correct the data, uh, but first it, it does a mapping of how the flux is varying along that arc length. So as you move uh, along the detector focal plane, how how different is the uh, is the flux responding. So we make that mapping uh, here. And uh, basically, we first apply a high pass filter. So the star might be doing some other changes or, or uh, astrophysical variation that we don't want to include in our fit. So we just divide that out first. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, uh, the paper uses 1.5 day B spline uh, or spline breakpoints. So we follow that exactly. And we can see what that looks like here. So here's just the raw flux, so exactly the raw flux, and then the, the time, and we fit this B spline uh, across like that, and that looks like a pretty good estimate. Um, you can go a little farther and just say, okay, uh, let's go ahead and um, mask out some of these bad data points and stuff, but that gets you pretty close. Okay, so we correct for, for those. So we have fluxes corrected for um, this overall trend, and we can also mask out some of those thrusters and, and apply uh, 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 clean fluxes here. Okay, uh, the next thing we do is this piecewise linear fit. So the paper breaks uh, this flux versus arc length uh, into 15 bins of means. So uh, basically just a, a piecewise linear fit and what we see when we apply that piecewise linear fit is this orange curve. Uh, here's all the uh, data points having corrected out the, the long-term drift. We don't want that. Uh, and lo and behold, we actually see a, a pretty tight fit. So most of the variation in the light curve, um, as you can see in the raw data, is just this back and forth as the, the spacecraft Kepler moves slightly uh, dragging the, the point spread function over different pixels and stuff. So uh, so if you can correct for that, as we've done here in the orange, and divide it out, then you can do much better than, um, than just the raw photometry. And then uh, what we've done here is show where all those uh, points are when the thrusters were firing. Um, and so those are, those are red. You don't want to include those in your fit. There's a few other ones over here. Uh, but pretty pretty tight correlation, so that's good. Uh, that looks really similar to figure four of the paper, which is here. In fact, almost identical um, using the same method, so that's good. So finally, we can apply that correction, so that mapping from where, where on that arc length you were and, um, and what the, the correction factor should be. So the corrected fluxes should be our, uh, our clean fluxes, so um, dividing out this... Um, uh, this trend uh, and throwing away some of the, the bad data points um, and then uh, dividing out by this trend uh, here, this interpolated function in orange. And we can look at the plot where we've multiplied back in our, our overall trend, uh, which was here. And sh sure enough, it's really quite uh, a tight correlation. So um, all of that instrumental noise associated with the detector position is gone and we have the quote-unquote self-flat fielded uh, uh, data shown here in orange. So that's it and that looks really similar to figure five uh, of the paper which is here. So lo and behold lots of variation in the raw photometry but the corrected photometry has a much better precision um, uh, shown here as maybe 40 parts per million over six hours. So pretty good.